Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie and welcome to the Start Your Fashion Business channel. So the intention of this channel was for me to be able to share all the fashion business tips and tricks, industry knowledge, and to prepare you for the online course, which I am launching next month. So this course is going to be an eight week comprehensive course on how to launch a successful fashion business. So if you are launching a collection or maybe you have started a fashion label, but you're kind of feeling stuck or you just need like a business push and motivation, then this course is for you because I'm going to be covering a lot and it's also applicable to all levels. So you don't have to be a fashion designer. You don't have to have any fashion background. This is for any entrepreneur wanting to live their dream or have their dream fashion label. So this course is going to launch really, really soon, but I have opened up uh, a waiting list and you'll see the link in the bottom right corner. So head over to that website if you do want to sign up to the waiting list. But in the meantime, you can always come back to this channel because I'm going to be dropping videos, also insider like look into my ethical production factory and how I run my business. So again, if you are new here, you're like, who am I? Who is Stephanie? Why should I listen to her? Well, I'm a fashion entrepreneur. I own a clothing brand and also a production facility. I also am a brand consultant which means that I help create brands from scratch. You can check me out personally on Instagram at Stephanie Shrikandi, and then my brand at This Is A Love Song or the production, ethical production facility called At Tile Studio. So you can also see the links in the description box if you wanna check out my work or give me a stop. But anyway, today's video is the Q&A video because as you know, if you've signed up to my course, you might have already been receiving my emails and I've been encouraging all of you guys to send me three questions, but I thought it would be really fun to answer them on a video instead of me typing like an email one by one, which would be crazy because I've been receiving, I don't know, hundreds of questions. So hence why I have been inspired to create this channel for you guys. So today's question is from... Da, 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 da. So it's from Farah Ada. So Farah uh, wrote to me and she said, Hi Stephanie, sending you massive earth-shaking love from Malaysia. I've been following you for years and I totally adore how you do things. You have no idea. I've always been wondering, number one, how do you start your business? Like from scratch, what are the challenges when you were to kickstart your business during the early stage? Did it require a huge capital? Were there downfalls as well? Okay, this is... Definitely a really good question because, you know, like starting a business, people think you need to have a lot of capital. You really don't. You probably need more creativity and tenacity than capital because starting a business is definitely not easy, but it is rewarding. So at the beginning, you do have to make sure that you have enough capital to be able to create and test your products and sell it to a certain extent. In my situation, I happen to have secure like a store in Bali and at the time back in 2010 it was fairly inexpensive to do so so we had this space but when I had the store I didn't even really have any products except for like this jewelry company that I had at the time called Rebirth naturally like having the store we had to like fill in the space and the initial thought was to have like brands that were um, producing in Bali majority of them were our friends to be in the store as consignment where we just like take a cut from like the sales. But of course we're like, hey, you know, maybe it's a good idea to um, have like an in-house brand. And at the time, because, you know, I didn't really have much to start with, we just created t-shirts. And I think our main goal at, the, at that time as well, because this was back in 2010, so we didn't really have like H&M or like Topshop or just like easy casual wear for like, you know, our generation. We, it was just really hard to get like just cool t-shirts. So that was the idea. And I had vintage fabrics that I had collected from traveling all around the world. So I thought it was, would be really cute to like put a vintage pocket, which also meant that each t-shirt would be slightly different because there's also only an 
limited amount of that vintage fabric. And the design was like really simple. And so like we had a lot of traffic, people coming in and out of the store. And like, it was cool because, you know, a mother and daughter could buy this design because it was just so age friendly and like simple. So that's how my business started. And it was basically because I was just kind of creative with the resources I have. So I didn't really require, like, it didn't require me a huge capital, but it required me to like be ballsy and like really go for it and kind of go with the flow. But of course there were also, you know, downfalls because at the beginning, like if I kind of had more of a business plan, maybe I was able to be more successful faster. But at the same time, I always like to think that, you know, everything goes the way that it's supposed to go. So you cannot really regret and those downfalls are actually really good necessary lessons. So that's how I started my business. So number two, I am aware that your brand has got all the attention from very famous celebrities. Did you really go big from the start or did you have to go through baby steps starting with local celebrities at first? Well, it was really unique in my situation because Bali is kind of like a melting pot and our store was kind of like a showroom and it happened to be in a really busy street called Obroy. And then also there was just a lot of like, you know, people that were holidaying that maybe were fashion agents overseas or like stylists and such. So you just never knew like who would come into the store. We even had Cara Delevingne pop in and I'll show you this photo. That's me and Cara Delevingne. She just came in and I mean, you wouldn't even really know that it was Cara Delevingne because she wasn't wearing any makeup. She was just, you know, super chill. But yeah, she was shopping up and down Oberoi Street and then happened to be going into our shop and like loved everything in it. So that was kind of like the way that it started organically getting traction. And this was before Instagram days. It was like zero social media. I think we had like a Facebook page. I think if my brand started in the digital era now with Instagram, it would be slightly different because with Instagram, you can totally like DM a celebrity or a big influencer directly, which is really, really great and puts you at a better position. However, with us, yeah, like it happened organically. And then from creating these relationships where let's say Cardo Levine wore it, that would attract the attention of another stylist. And at the time, um, we also had like press at thisisalovesong.com. So it kind of welcomed stylists to be able to email us directly if they wanted to have our pieces for press or like to feature them in a magazine. So it eventually gathered more and more attention to the point where we ended up having to get a PR because it was just overwhelming. And we needed to ship so many things outside of Indonesia that it was, it just made more sense to have the collection in an office which we had one uh, in New York, we had one in London as well. And like, so they were the ones responsible for basically accommodating these like press inquiries, which were stylist polls or, you know, loans for music videos and, and such. You can really definitely go big from the start if you wanted to, but I don't think necessarily now that you have to do that. I think it's more about cultivating relationships and using the power of the internet to get noticed. So I'm actually going to be discussing this and uh, like entire marketing um, module in the course. So I'm really going to go into the nitty gritty on how to do it. And I'm even going to be providing email templates that I have basically used. So um, they're proven successfully. And so I'm going to share all of this in the course. So make sure that you sign up. Okay, so far as last question, number three. Did your brand became really awesome because you have a lot of connections with famous people and influencers? If so, as someone who is not an influencer or have any connections with anyone famous or any influencers, how would you advise me to market my brand? And then she says, in asking this question, I'm not disregarding the fact that you are a hard worker, so I hope my question does not come out wrong. That is very, very sweet. First of all, I don't definitely don't consider myself an influencer, but uh, I do have friends that happen to be influencers. So yes, that definitely helps because, you know, like they support me and I feel like with friendships, you should support one another. So it doesn't necessarily mean if, 
if like you have an influencer friend, but if you have a photographer friend, find a way where you can collaborate and work together, but not to be sidetracked with the question. So my answer to this, to market your brand again, it goes back to um, Instagram or like any social media platform that you can utilize to gain more exposure um, for your brand or put your brand you know, in front of the correct set of eyes. So I feel like nowadays, because influencer marketing is actually really, really important, there's also different tiers of influencers. So micro influencers, they have a smaller uh, following, but they have higher conversion. The utilizing them will convert more sales as opposed to working with a massive influencers who has a million followers, but their engagement rate is really low. So actually establishing those connections, it's about like aligning your brand with the right people. It's about authenticity as well. So like you have to find an influencer that really would like authentically represent your brand and is not just doing it for the money or the sponsorship or whatnot, you know, because then it's kind of like flushing your money down the toilet and it doesn't feel real and the followers can really see through that. And of course, I actually don't have famous people as friends. Um, I think through my brand, because at the beginning I was really marketing it as like a music festival brand, I was able to have artists kind of reach out to me instead, as I was also reaching out to them, because I feel like everything is a two-way street. You know, time will tell when you actually will meet, but I we did do our fair share of reaching out to people. But we also had, you know, artists reaching out to us. And it's funny, it's like once you break one egg, it kind of cracks everything. So once you secure, let's say, one music video or, you know, magazine feature or whatnot, then you kind of get the ball rolling and people will flock to you. So that's kind of what happened with us. But I don't necessarily say that a famous person would be good for your brand because doesn't mean that they're famous, that they wear your brand and people will buy it. So it's more important to really build your story and align that with your values and then find your tribe of people, which is going to be your like loyal customers, you know, your fan base who are super important. And of course, like your ideal customers. And like, I think it's really about building authentic connections and you can really be the face at the beginning to be the one establishing these connections because it's more of a personal feel. And as a small brand, I think that's like the most advantage that you have over the bigger brands because I definitely think that people like to work with individuals who are passionate about their work. You can position yourself in that way, then you can establish these connections with an influencer or someone famous. Uh, wrap this up. She says, my questions are truly out of curiosity. I do hope that these are appropriate questions to be asked. You are an inspiration, truly. Thank you. I do hope you will be covering on emailing templates to approach celebrities to market my brand in your course as well. Love, Farah Sham. So yeah, definitely. I'm going to be covering that in the marketing bit. I have like templates that you can use to approach celebrities approach their stylist, how to find their stylist. Um, like these are hacks that I will share that I've used myself. So don't worry, the course will cover it all. But of course, um, I want to hear your feedback. I want to know what you guys have in mind, which is why like I am opening this Q&A session. So if you haven't sent your three burning questions, please do so I can actually answer them on these videos. So if you really find these helpful, please like, comment below, tell me, you know, tell me a bit about yourself, about your project. Let's get this community going. And then subscribe to my channel so that you can get the notification bell when I upload the video every Saturday. And in the meantime, I also want to connect with you on Instagram and TikTok. My Instagram and TikTok specifically for this is at start your fashion business. So please do follow me there and you can DM me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.